and welcome everybody. So hi, I'm Steph McPhee. I am your community and um, uh, gosh, I don't know why I always get that <laughs> communications guide and the North Florida coordinator. It's all those C's. Um, and today we have the rest of the coordinating team, Emily from the Treasure Coast and Palm Beach areas. We've got Joanna from Tampa Bay and we've got Diane from Central Florida. And um, as you guys know, I'm, I'm gonna be sitting in here and um, supporting um, Nancy <laughs> in her absence. And so there are a couple of things going on from WeBank's perspective. And if you got the emails, you will have seen the biggest thing we wanna make sure that you guys are getting out to do today is if you haven't cast your vote for the WeBank pitch, make sure you do that. That closes tonight. Um, I think it's midnight our time, 8 p.m. Um, Pacific time, but make sure you get a chance to cast your vote. It's a really great way to support other WBEs. Um, it's going to be an opportunity where now they've, they've got some and then there was a vote. We're going to get down to a few more and then they're going to have an opportunity to talk a little bit. And what's really great too is you get a chance to watch videos. And so you guys know we were offering you guys a chance to do a 90 second video. And I think this would be a great thing for you to go see what some of the other people have presented and they're talking about how they pivoted their business during COVID-19. So if nothing else, um, go watch that. But definitely it's, it's so great if everybody gets out and watches and gives a chance to support. Um, and so that's one of the biggest things. The other things I wanna make sure that you guys noticed if you didn't in the email is one of our partners, um, I think it's uh, WeBank Pacific is hosting a really great um, virtual conference. They, they're taking a conference they normally do and taking it virtual. And they have special rates for WBEs. And um, I'll drop those links in when I quit running my mouth. <laughs> and, um, and then they're in the emails as well. And we've been posting them in the community. So uh, just make sure that you're checking it out. We're trying to make sure that we are communicating because it's what is the positive right of all of this is that as we go virtual, um, we are getting a chance to take advantage of what some of our um, sister RPOs are doing around the country. So that is one of the positives, right? When we can look at this. Um, and so with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Diane to kick us off from Central Florida today. Okay, hi everybody. Um, this is Diane Sears, and I am monitoring what's going on with coronavirus and how it's affecting our business community. Um, I was really lucky today to have an interview with Orange County Mayor Jerry Demings, and he kind of explained to me what they've been doing and what, um, you know, how that's working. And because he is the elected official who's in charge of Orange County, when the emergency um, uh, restrictions, I guess, when emergencies kick in, he becomes kind of the de facto leader of all of the municipalities in Orange County. So that includes Orlando. <clears throat> and then he's been coordinating with all the other surrounding counties on the COVID response. So very interesting to kind of have him walk me through that. Um, <clears throat> we are uh, here starting to experience a big spike, just like the rest of the state. Um, our uh, state is now past 100,000 cases of coronavirus. So, you know, the spikes are really concerning for all of us who are you know, starting to watch our businesses kind of open back up. And, and so everybody's talking about it. And in Orange County, there has been um, an order that uh, all of us should be wearing masks. So, of course, that can't be enforced or it's not being enforced no one will be getting a ticket or anything but when you go out into a public area when you're in a restaurant those kinds of things if you're not actually eating or jogging or walking you know out in, in the air you should be wearing a mask and that's that was the um the decision that jerry demings made so um there is some pushback on that you know i've seen some protesters saying they sh shouldn't have to wear masks and so you know, whether you're for that or against, we are actually just watching the, the numbers climb. Um, I heard on CNN today that Florida has now surpassed uh, New York as the epicenter of uh, cases. So that's something for all of us to take seriously. And, you know, I'm wondering how that's going to affect our, our businesses and what's that going to mean. So we all just have to be vigilant and stay careful. So that's where we are there. 
Um, I am uh, doing a round table with I4 Business Magazine tomorrow of some of our legal teams, <clears throat> legal people here in Central Florida. So one of our own women business owners, Catherine Losey, who owns Losey Law Firm, will be on that along with three other Orlando area attorneys and we will be discussing uh, what all of these legal issues mean, you know, what kinds of things are our businesses experiencing. So that's at 10 o'clock our time and um, it's free. So I'll actually post the link in the, in the chat, but lots of conversations lately about what all this means for our businesses. Um, yeah, so uh, the other thing, Diane, can you let everybody know what is the, um, Go For The Greens has their last call, right, this week? We do. So Go For The Greens, just like um, We Back Florida has been having webinars every week. And our last one is, uh, we said that we would commit to do it through June, and then we'll stop so that we can start getting ready for the Go For The Greens virtual um we're, we're not calling it a conference we're calling it the go for the greens experience which will be all virtual in september so uh tomorrow at two uh, i'm sorry wednesday at 2 p.m uh the last one is with home depot and raytheon so we will be talking to the two supplier diversity leaders from those two corporations about how they're doing business in today's COVID environment and what that means for you as business owners that is awesome. And just as a reminder, <clears throat> excuse me, if you've missed any, uh, the YouTube channel, we've been sharing that in all of our emails and um, you can go to their Facebook page and get it. So the sessions have been fabulous. And I think it's been a great example of, you know, again, we've all pivoted and depending on how things go, you know, we, we I think have gotten down some really great systems. So we, the main thing right now, right, is to um, keep things, keep business going and, um, and to utilize a lot of the things that we've put in place. Steph, um, I also wanted to let everybody know, I know Joanna and I've been working on this um, really hard, that we had originally this year, we had in place several dates for uh, a, a monthly get together for our local members. And so we were calling them meetups. And the Orlando meetup was, oh, now I need to look in my calendar, don't I? Um, so we had one scheduled for July, August, October. And so in general, our meetups are usually the third Thursday of the month. Um, this month we have four Thursdays, so it's actually the, or five Thursdays, so it's actually the fourth. So next month on, on, in July, um, it will be July 23rd. And I'm sorry, July 16th, sorry. And so rather than doing that um, in person, we're going to start doing that as a, a Zoom. So, so this is just purely social and we're still figuring out how it's gonna work electronically, but, um, but we're excited about it. You know, it'll be a, from five to six. That is awesome. <clears throat> Actually, that's a great segue. Excuse me, guys, my allergies have got me a little bit today. Um, I think that's a great segue, Joanna, over to you then, and you can kind of pick up there. Yeah, so hi everybody, I'm Joanna from the Tampa Bay area representing Webeck, Florida. And yeah, so we did have um, one night a month that we were getting together networking and uh, we were inviting our supplier diversity representatives to attend and uh, that was getting um, <laughs> all like, you know, in the process and we were enjoying that and then all of a sudden we had a COVID hit. So we have decided to just go ahead and continue with the dates and just do it virtually. So I will be, uh, and along with Diane, we will be sending out an email with the Zoom link so that you can um, be invited to attend. If you have never been to one of our events and are interested in attending, then just sign up um, to receive our newsletters and or email me personally or Diane or anybody and we will get you uh, the link that you need. And um, over here in Tampa, effective uh, June 19th, we did receive um, the mandatory mask order uh, here in Tampa. and. Uh, you know, so any businesses where you have customers that are um, being attended to face to face with an employee, you know, they are required, your employees are required to wear um, a mask, you know, 
to protect uh, the other citizens. Really, it seems like it's affecting the elderly, but we know that this can be passed on over to other people and then uh, to them. So we just want to try to keep everybody six feet apart. And also, um, the city of Tampa is doing a great job of providing um, masks to people who don't have them. There are drive through locations where you can go and get them if you need to. Uh, so I would recommend that business owners check out their, um, their chambers, their local chambers, because they are providing a, a lot of information as to what to do during these um, times and it's specific to the area. And so definitely check that out. And also um, some exciting news for Hillsborough County residents. Um, right now, they are starting to um, take applications for what's called the R3 recovery. Let me pull this up for a second. And so the R3, uh, Hold on one. Okay, so basically, um, if we check out the Hillsborough County uh, website, okay, there is something called the R3 Economic Recovery Financial Assistance. And basically, Hills Hillsborough County um, is offering financial assistance to, it's in a financial assistance program to assist um, local small businesses that have been um, hurt by COVID-19. And so there are three different types of programs. One is a kickstart business and the other, there's another one called back to work. And the last one is safe at work matching. And so I will link, I will add the link to the chat box and you can see if any of these grants are um, of any of interest to you. So you do not have to pay these back. Uh, the Hillsborough County did receive money from, um, the CARES, the CARES Act, and so they have money to distribute, and this is the process that they have decided to use. So I will also add that to the link, and um, I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend celebrating Father's Day, and tomorrow is National Wear Pink Day, so show your spirit and wear pink yeah Woo -woo, my color <laughs> i love it i was waiting I, uh, to see what it was going to be this yeah. week <laughs> well, what, you, is, what is the purpose of the pink for tomorrow is it just for the sake oh. of pink or any reason yeah so so what happened was um you know there's a history there's no real reason as to why we know why it became, you know, National Pink Day, but um, the color pink has um, been found on parts of the human body and all throughout nature. And the name pink is believed uh, to go back to the 14th century. And, um, you know, they're finding that pink is also, it, it's usually associated with females, but now can also be associated with, with males. So we can all celebrate this wonderful color and enjoy. I love <laughs> it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I forget. I know there's a couple of um, golfers that uh, wear, men that wear pink. That's their signature. So Mm -hmm. um, I love everybody embracing it, and uh, yeah, it's definitely a favorite, as you can imagine, in my household with a little five-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much, Joanna. So I, I will actually just jump in because I'm going to be doing the, the presentation um, and give you guys a quick update on what's going on up here in North Florida, and similar to pretty much the entire state, we are just watching everything unfold with COVID. One of the biggest things is um, we are also on the rise up here in North Florida in our numbers. And um, there was a situation that happened actually in downtown St. Augustine with a group of individuals, I think that were on vacation or something that visited a few um, restaurants in town. So some bars and restaurants have closed. And so one of the biggest things right now um, is uh, number one, we don't have any mandates yet on masks. Um, a lot of businesses are just choosing. They're going to have signs up and things. I know even my daughter's um, day camp uh, went to all the kids wearing um, uh, masks for the rest of summer camp so that they hopefully don't have to close it. 
Um, and um, so it was, it was uh, really cute. We've been practicing that anyway with the little ones, right? Um, but uh, um, so definitely, I think the biggest thing uh, is to be checking, you know, after, is you, if you are going out, you're looking to um, support some businesses, which is great, or even just have some social time. I think the biggest thing right now is to double check that, every, that where you want to go is open and to double check if they've changed any of their policies under the circumstances, because we are seeing, like I said, especially here in the um, downtown St. Augustine area, which is a really popular place for people to be going on the weekends. Um, we're seeing a lot of things kind of backtracking a little bit changes, you know, people, they might be moving more outdoors. So a lot of places um, have paused business um, or gone back to just pickups for a little bit. And, um, but I will say, uh, as I have seen, um, I haven't seen any changes coming out of the chamber. I think I'd mentioned last time that all the chambers here were trying to do at least one in-person event starting in July. Um, including um, the the Jacks women's group, um, so but so I would say I would I would keep an eye on that. Most of those are going to require masks if you do attend, um, uh, because uh, they were trying to go for the 25 plus people in attendance. So um, the way we're looking at it, hey, it's a new ex fashion accessory, right, guys? So um, uh, you know um, I know that they can be a little bit uncomfortable and hard, but um, you know, they're calling them masquerades. And I think um, one of the groups might even be doing a little bit of a competition on um, most uh, fun and most business branded. And so definitely, um, you know, let's, we can have a little fun with this and try to keep each other safe. The biggest thing that we're hearing up here, and I'm sure you guys are as well, is just that we don't want to have to shut things down. So if masks are the way to go, then we're going to go with the way with masks to try to keep businesses open as long as possible as we continue to see the, um, the, the growth here. And again, this is in our age group, guys. You know, it's the, the 20 year olds, 30 year olds, 40 year olds that are coming down with it now. And um, it, although we have been laughing, is because people like my parents don't leave the house. <laughs> Um, so we just want to keep it safe. So again, the, my biggest thing is just what Joanna said, make sure you're checking all the websites you are checking in with any place you're trying to go events, make sure that you are up to date as much as possible, because I know things are changing at a very rapidly pay, rapid pay, pace right now. And um, just like I said, last night at nine o'clock, they sent the note and said the kids, we want them to wear masks because it was sort of a quick decision. So we got to be prepared to shift and to pivot as much as we can and to support each other. Um, they are still doing um, a really cool program up here. It's called the gift card program. Um, I know that the um, St. John's Chamber is doing it. I think some of the others are allowing you to post products and specials, especially if you have pickup specials, things like that going on in your businesses, depending on what you're doing. And um, so if you are running any kind of specials, uh, make sure you reach out to your local chamber. A lot of them or the city councils like here, um, Flagler has a whole website again of the businesses that are open and what kind of specials they're offering. Um, you know, and that's any kind of business. So, you know, whether it be housing or construction or roofing, I have, I have a lot of friends in roofing up here. <laughs> so whatever it might be, um, you know, definitely reach out and take that as a chance and then just uh, stay safe and stay in touch. Um, and I put in there a link to all of us. Joanna mentioned about getting in touch if you want to get on um, Diane and Joanna's list if you're not already um, getting their emails when they send out independently just to members in their marketplace or individuals in their marketplace, you can um, go to the page that I posted. It has all of our contact details there. And so with that, we're going to hand over to Miss Emily and hear how things are going down there in the South. Emily, let's see, let me unmute you. Okay. There we there go. You go. Okay. <laughs> my buttons, my apologies. Okay. Well, hello everyone. My name is Emily McHugh here in Fort Pierce and representing the Treasure Coast and Palm Beach County. Uh, so three main things I want to share with you today. The first is regarding money. You always want to look for the opportunities to either get some special grant or funding or guarantee. So Enterprise Florida, our state economic uh, department of commerce really is promoting a program called the microfinance guarantee program. I'm going to type that in right this moment, drop that in the link. 
So enter, you go to enterpriseflorida.com and it will say small business microfinance guarantee program. And what it is is for companies, I believe it's if it's under 25 employees and under um, 1.5 million in sales, you can apply for, I think up to $250,000 loan. And you have to go through your bank and meet whatever the criteria are, but it's 50% guaranteed loan. So that's being offered now with Enterprise Florida. So you might want to check that out. They also have some other loan guarantee programs as well, depending on the size of the business that are now available. Also here in St. Lucie County, as Diane was saying, around the state, the, the corona cases are spiking and they're spiking sharply in St. Lucie County. We've had pretty relatively no, low numbers, but now they're getting up there. And so they're closing restaurants and they're kind of reverting back to, to that uh, place of shutting down again, gradually, not maybe all at once, but it's happening. And I think what's, what's been going on is that we're so eager to resume life as we know it and life as we want it, that people are getting impatient. And so they're maybe throwing some of the precautions to the wind or thinking, things are better, so I don't need to take the precautions. And I think that's where we can run into some issues. So definitely take the precautions and just, you know, be at peace with the time we're in. What can I say? We, we can't do anything else. So just keep being vigilant and careful and not rushing ahead of what you need to do. And also looking out for the opportunities amidst the crisis. And I think as business people, that really should be one of our key focuses. I mean, things mightn't be the way we want it, but is there some opportunity for me to look at? And with that, you kind of shift your thought process into being more um, open to the, the changes that are taking place. Also, we have for Palm Beach County, and I think this is the state of Florida, but I was looking at it specifically for Palm Beach County. You can dial 211 for all kinds of resources and access to um, social needs and so forth that offers all kinds of things. But there's a program called Two in One Sunshine and it's designed for the elderly, but I don't think it's exclusively to them. Where people who don't, they don't get to speak to people, they are lonely at home, people can call them and, or they can call into this number and talk to somebody. So, it's good to know that these programs exist. So maybe if not for yourself, you might know someone who could benefit from them and be able to uh, share that information. So that was 211 Sunshine. And also I wanted to let you know on a personal note that I am reaching out. I'm calling all the people in my territory, Treasure Coast, Palm Beach. So when you see my call come in, just answer the phone. Thank you. <laughs> but I've had some wonderful conversations with many of you ladies. I have to tell you, it's a pleasure to talk to you and to learn about your business. And my goal in con calling you is number one, introduce myself as being here for you. And number two, to learn more about your business so we can better assist you, like how you can maximize your, your certification with WeBank, how we can be alert to the business development interests that you have, and be able to share information with you that can really be beneficial. So uh, I look forward to more of those calls and thank you for those who have taken the time and spoken with me so far. It's been a pleasure and um, look forward to talking to all of you very soon. Thank you. That is awesome. Yeah, definitely mark our names. Yeah, if, if we call us, don't uh, block us. <laughs> why we're calling it could be an opportunity too yeah you never know yeah that's actually a really good point and um one of the things that um we've been encouraging i know you guys have done the same when we do um the virtual site visits now talking to all of you guys out there and especially those of you that are members and if we haven't had an update with you feel free to schedule a call with us it doesn't have to be the person in your area if you you know just have identified with somebody on the call um we'll t any of us will take your call but it's a great time to update us on what's going on in your business if you have pivoted because Joanna just mentioned it and it's a really great point but um our office Lisa and Gussie and and all of us, even as well as Nancy, we oftentimes get outreach from companies and they may be looking for something very specific. And um, 
So, you know, the first thing is, is um, definitely go in if you haven't, if you've changed, I think we've mentioned this a few times in um, We Connect. If you are a WBE, make sure you've gone in, if you've pivoted and you have some new services, especially if it's something related to COVID-19, make sure that you are updating that because um, some of the companies that are members go in and search and then we also search those as well. Um, but then also get to know us because, um, like I said, I know that some we've had some really great stories of members who um, got huge opportunities simply because um, we knew who they were and could make a recommendation. So um, the other thing, I, I just had a, a, a little thing. Um, I went to Emily, has anybody thought of making the mask now that's like your business card on your face, right? I mean, somebody needs oh, to do that. Good idea. <laughs> That's a great idea. And um, by the way, our, not all chambers are giving away masks. Our chamber is actually selling masks and they're selling disposable and they're also selling the ones that my company, Kasorg, is making. So nice. we are. That's awesome. I, th I think we need to, you know, um, think about that where you can get your business and your email. <laughs> put on and uh, since we're not swapping uh, business cards right now we're not touching and we're going to be wearing we our masks out. <laughs> I have seen some really good ones come through with the branding um, mm -hmm. a lot of coaches actually are doing the branding of their business um, because it starts a conversation so see like we can get all creative with these masks guys <laughs> um, so uh, anything else from the group and then we'll um, everybody okay perfect so we're going to jump on in and I know you guys get me a lot, so we'll, we're going to try to get through this, but one of the th conversations that we've been having as we do the site visits is we also take an opportunity to visit your websites and um, to kind of see what that looks like and get to know you a little bit before we meet with you, and that really brings up a conversation among the team that it might be good to hold a session where we talk about what are some key things that you should have on your website. And I know a lot of us have laughed, um, you know, you build your website, right? And then um, lately it just sort of sits there, you know, you go off and you would be networking and you'd be having meetings and then six months, a year, two years pass and the website's just been sitting there. So this is the time now that we're back in virtual, people will be visiting your website if they haven't. Um, and it's a great time to give it a little bit of a, a, a I won't say spring cleaning because we're in summer, but to freshen it up. And um, so that's what we're going to spend a little bit of time about today. And uh, I'm going to share you just some tips and hold on because I'm going to um, <clears throat> share my whole screen and then start the presentation because I got some uh, samples to show you as we go along. And let me close this little window. Okay, everybody can see that, right? <laughs> Okay, great. So one of the things, um, so what we put together today is really the four things your website needs, right? So there's lots and lots of things that you can put on your website, but what we wanted to talk about today are things that we've identified as a team and things that I've been seeing myself in a lot of the courses and things I've been taking um, around marketing that are no matter what, your site needs to have these four things. <laughs> so you, you can have other stuff, but make sure that you have these four things. And you know, a lot of times that you're gonna ask this question, like, like, did you know that you really only need four things to make your website stand out? You don't need this massive website with lots and lots and lots of arms. And we used to laugh about, um, you know, talk about you build the website and then maybe you would grow and you'd add a page and then you'd grow and you'd add another page and then something would change and you'd add another page. And uh, one of the organizations I worked with uh, about 15 years ago, we laughed that all of a sudden our website, number one, looked like 42nd Street because everything was popping and glowing and we had added and all this new animation and stuff that happened. And then it had also just turned into this monster on the back end when you looked at it and trying to find for example, where something was, if somebody said, oh, that's a wrong phone number, um, was just crazy. So simplicity is really the key nowadays and keeping your website where people can very quickly get to what they need. And so here are the four things that you need to have on your website. And we're gonna go through each of these. The first is a landing page. The second, people need to know who you are. People need to know what you do people need to know how to contact you. Now again, this may seem very simple and you're really going to have more questions, but hang in there. We're going to go through all of these. So 
why do you only need these four things? And again, this is just the basics. If you're going to put up a website, say you just started your business or you're building a new website, as long as you have these four things, you should be able to hit go and be able to run your business. And the reason is, is simple truly is better. We have really gone back from the age of when we were building websites. And again, you'd click and you'd have like this monster long um, you know, menu and things. We're really getting away from that because we want things that are easy to navigate, that helps people get their questions answered. And the main thing is people want to know, like, and trust you. So they want to be able to find everything they need quite quickly and they don't get frustrated and they get to know you and then they feel that level of trust. So that's really the main thing, reason we talk about these things. So let's dig in and some people will ask because, you know, some of the terminology keeps changing. Many of you may know this, but now we talk about this idea of, do you have a landing page? What's your landing page? Like you may even hear people say, I don't, you know, not your website, but where's your sales page? Where's your landing page, right? It's, it's very common vernacular now. And so what this is, is it's where people land um, when they put in your address. And so it, it is your homepage, for lack of a better word. Um, but again, it's just sort of the new speak and how we're talking about it because it has some different components than they used to have in the old traditional homepage. This is also kind of like the front door of your business. Think about it. If you have a physical space, right, people see the front of your space, right? They drive up, they park the car, and they see your business, and they see your front door. It's also like your welcome sign or your welcome mat, and it's going to be, for most people, your first impression, especially now in the time of COVID. Um, because you may not be getting out to those events. And so this may be the first thing people are seeing about you is this landing page. So those are just some things to keep in mind. Oops, I think I, I clicked off of it. Oh, okay, here we go. So what are things to include on your landing page? And again, this is the page that people are going to land on um, when they put in your um, address. And again, these are just five sections that we're seeing the most common. And in my experience, when I work with business owners to build their websites, this is really, um, you know, the top things you need to get going. And it doesn't really matter. You can put these in a different order. This is just the most common. So the very first thing that we see on top of all pages is a picture, and that is called your hero image. And it's usually an image that's gonna define your business. So for example, with us, you're gonna to go to WeBank, uh, WeBank Florida and you'll see pictures of women <laughs> and successful women, um, hopefully people that you identify with, right? Um, and it also in this hero image is gonna be a link to sign up for something. It might be your newsletter, it might be an email. This is something that you can regularly change just depending on what you're doing. So for example, um, say you are offering a special or a product, you can change that link, but it's to get them to do an action. The other thing then is an overview just of your business. But again, this is simple. This isn't the whole history of your business. This is literally what we do. Here you go. Boop, 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 boop. This is what we do. This is what we offer. Then you're going to go into a key areas of your service or your products. And the best way to do this is really in columns with icons or images so that people have just a little description. So like I said, I have some, a lot of uh, some friends that have roofers, construction, um, various different businesses up in here, up in this area that are getting ready for hurricane season. And so they may have on their site, we have an evaluation is one thing that we might do. We come out and test your, your roof. Um, so they might have three or four things that they do besides just putting on a new roof, right? And so you're gonna wanna put those into buckets. Um, for example, here at Weback Florida, we do certification, we do events. And so when you go on our page, you're going to see three buckets of things or four buckets, depending on what it is. Um, and you can get right to it. It's really simple. Um, and then depending on your business, you would typically have a section that you would put testimonials. And if you don't have testimonials, like say your new business, this is a great place to start your blog and to put blog articles and things like that because you're trying to showcase if you don't have testimonials yet you can showcase your knowledge and your expertise through blogs and then the final thing on your page is literally just a contact us form and so i'm going to jump over and let you guys um 
see, hopefully, <laughs> a couple of examples. And I'm going to start with WeBank. And again, I want you to see this, right? So here at the top, I think everybody can see that. Um, here at the top is the hero with a button to do something. Um, then they go into, you know, what they offer. And again, this part can be a little bit different, but I want you to see something. They have one, two, three, four, five sections. You see that? So they've got five sections. Um, and again, it goes back to that idea. And then at the bottom, right, here's the thing about, I mean, this is the footer, but here's how you can engage with us, how you can contact us, different stuff. But there are five sections on their landing page. Another one that I had to show that I think people will laugh, this is a little bit of a different example, but I just thought this was hysterical when I um, checked their website and hopefully it's gonna load, it's the Disney site. Um, but everybody, if you haven't been on Disney, you will find this so fascinating. Oh no, it may not load. But actually the hero image is loading. So they've got the same thing, one, <laughs> two, um, this is a, another one here, three, four, five. I thought that was so fascinating. I had to show you guys. So again, they have five sections. It's a little bit busier, obviously, because they got a lot more going on. Um, but again, they have five main sections on their site. Um, and then of course, you know, you come to our page and it's the same one, two, three, four, five. We've got six right now because if you count the COVID um, that we've added for temporary, but typically it's five. So that just gives you a little bit of an example on um, what this looks like. And uh, these will be in the presentation if you wanna um, keep going. Okay, so um, the second thing then is putting in there about who you are. Now that was the longest thing is about the landing page. This was something that we didn't see actually everybody that we've been working with lately have on their page. And this is so critical guys. A lot of people will say, well, why do I need an about me? Why do I need this? This is your about me page or the meet me page. Um, again, this gets back to this idea that people will only buy from someone they like, know, and trust. And the best way to do that is uh, to have a page where they can find out about you. Um, and then you are your business. Don't make this just about your company. Also talk about your company, but make sure people know, um, you know, some more things about you. And we're going to go into that a little bit. Oh, sorry, guys, I'm clicking a little fast. <laughs> um, and so what to include in your about page. It's going to be very similar in essence of having some sections, but obviously the sections are a little bit different. So here again, you're gonna have an, a hero image with a call to action. The reason you want this on an each page is that it attracts the eye, don't just go straight for verbiage, and then it's gonna make them potentially do something. On your about you page, it could be, you know, get my newsletter, um, you know, get this free book, whatever, right? But again, it's a, it's a call to action. Um, then you wanna make sure you go into who you are. Make sure you put a picture, people want to see you, and list a few facts. This is not your, your bio. This isn't everything you've ever done, every accomplishment. You can list some awards if it's applicable, especially to your business, certifications if it's applicable to your business, but don't go overboard because think of this as just meeting somebody and you're going to give them a little bit of information about you just enough for them to go wow but don't overwhelm them whereas we all know how many times we've been sitting at something and people go on and on and on and you're like okay we got it they sit on 20 boards and they have won every award after a while it gets to be a little much so you just want to list the ones and especially the things that support your business why you do what you do. We talk a lot about this, Simon Sinek in the book, your why. This is really important, but this isn't just your why. This is why you started this business, what it is about this, because then you get into what it means for you them, for your audience, right? So for example, you know, here at WeBank, um, WeBank Florida, we exist because we wanna help you utilize and grow your business through certification, utilizing the certification process, right? We have a real why we are in business and what that means for you. Um, you can also put a quote and some photos, but again, at the end, this gets back to making sure there's always a contact us or a contact me form. So every bottom, you're gonna have a call to action with an image and every 
every top you're going to have that and every bottom you're going to have a contact um, form. So it keeps it consistent and what you're doing here is you are training the eye to know, oh, no matter what page I go to, there's something I can get at the top and there's a way for me to get to them at the bottom. Um, I'm going to show you this really great example. This is actually a, a coach that Nancy and I just um, adore and we do a lot of work with. So Janine Blackwell, and if you've never checked out um, her work, so if you go in here, you'll see her about, and she's got a couple of drop down things, but you'll see this one's a little bit different. Um, she's just got a little bit more graphics here, right? So she's put a little bit about where she's gone and um, you know pictures of herself, and she's done it in a letter format. But again, you can see in here, right? Um, a message from me to you, you can do this. Um, and then she gets into what she does is she teaches people how to create six figure courses. At the top, she's got your call to action, get this book. Um, and then at the bottom, right, she's got her quote, and then, you know, sign up for my email, get in contact with me, right? So you'll see that this is um, very much what we're talking about in that about page. Okay, we're gonna jump back and uh, keep going here. Um, so then you want to make sure that you have a section about what you do. And this is because people clearly want to know how they can work with you and what you do. You want to make this very clear. I don't know how many times, right, we've either been in conversation with somebody or maybe you even have gone to a website. You're like, I still don't know what they do. <laughs> um, so you need this to be very clear. And people want to clearly understand how what you do will impact them. So you want to tell them and then tell them what it's going to do for them. And so again, you, what is it? The top is your hero with your call to action, could be something free. Then you're gonna to wanna to bucket your services and your products. So literally, like we talked about on the landing page, put very quick buckets so that it's repeating. It should be similar to what they saw on the front. Um, for example, I just bought with a client and on the front, she wanted people to know that there were these three ways and she didn't list one-to-one -one coaching, but on the uh, work with me page, we listed one-to-one -one coaching. So you wanna keep it very, very simple. And then again, uh, use images and icons. The cleaner this looks, the better. Don't put too much because you want them to reach out for you. You want to really think of this as this is their taste, right? This is their sampler that they go, oh, that's interesting. I'd love to know more about that. Or that, that sounds like exactly what I want to need. And then you're going to drive them to your contact us form. And so again, I'm going to go back over to Janine's and I know I'm jumping around because uh, she's just got a really simple um, work with me and she calls it work with me. Now she doesn't have a call to action here, but um, again, I recommend that's a great thing to do. And you'll see here, she's got it literally in buckets, work with us to grow your business. And then she's got where her team can actually build things for you. So here are the three ways that you can work with her. The fourth thing you can do is actually have her team work with you. Right. So again, very, very simple. That's all there is to it. And so you'll see that is the theme of the day is uh, keep it, keep it simple. Um, and so the last thing we're going to talk about is the contact page. And you've already seen this, right? Because this is not just a page. This needs to be on every page. You don't want to make them hunt for it. And you want it to be simple. And um, really the best thing to do is to have it at the bottom of every single page and you if you haven't seen that yet you will um, uh, going forward so here's some other questions can i just put this all on the landing page <laughs> and if that's something you want to do absolutely you can do that um, but here's some things i want you to think about do you yourself like long, long pages? And what I mean by is that sometimes you go to pages and you can scroll and scroll and scroll and you're like, but how much is it? Or how do I join? And you can't find and you scroll and you scroll and you scroll and it just takes forever. That is common. You're going to see that a lot. Those are typically more of a sales page and not your landing page, right? So again, we're talking about your your actual, what you're using as your website. When you see those pages and you scroll and it says sign up now and you scroll some more, it says sign up now and you scroll some more and you sign up now, 
those are what people are using to actually sell a product that's different than a landing page but you can have something that has all this on there my recommendation would be that you have your designer whoever you're working with or yourself put that you can jump to the certain sections of the page if you get too long longer than five sections um, and um, and also think about your audience you know depending on what you're selling you want to make sure that they are just as interested and they can find what they need um, and that this is something that's going to appeal to them um, so here's some other questions so what about if i need a store or a client page or speaking um, don't i just need more <laughs> and my challenge to you is more is it more better or is it just more and um, again, you need to think about your business. So if you have a business and it's all around a shop, then obviously you need the shop link on there. Um, but you don't necessarily have to have just more. I was um, working with a client the other day and she was like, well, don't I need to put links to everything on the main page? No, because you wanted to drive them simply to your how to work with me page and then they're going to find it all there. The thing is, is about less pages, keeping the content, content nice and compact, easy to find, give them just enough information that they understand what you're doing and how it will impact them and then reach them, have them reach out and connect with you. So again, if you need these things like a store, and when I talk about a client page, some places like to put here for my clients or here's a list of logos. Um, maybe you have speaking, um, like for me, I do have a speaking page because um, it's a whole separate entity of my business. However, you can get to it from my front pages. So, um, but don't just put more. Literally, you need those four things and you can get going. Um, and then as your business grows, you can look at how these things intertwine and fit, but really speaking should be um, connected to your how to work with me page and um, you can put at the bottom of that um, uh, the, the about our company page, some of the logos, if you're, you're allowed to do so of working with. So again, um, don't think that you need a lot, a lot of clicks. You don't want people hunting and pecking around your site. So I want you to think of this. Consider the fact that if you go into a grocery store or go into any store, right? And I've got the, the shopping cart here. So I go into my local store and I am ready to go. Now, when I go into a store, there are aisles and aisles and aisles and I can get completely overwhelmed because say I'm looking for a tin of tomato soup. I just want to go get a can of tomato soup. Well, if those things aren't labeled, then I'm going to hunt all over the place to try to find the tomato soup. So the idea about this is that when people come to your website, they may be ready to work with you. They are shopping for something, whether it be you're the one they're going to select or not, they're shopping. And so you've got them down your aisle. You want to make it very clear and very easy to know what's on your aisle. Hello, you've reached Stephanie. I am this, and this is what you're going to find down my aisle. <laughs> And it's not just going to say food down this aisle. It's going to say specifically what's down this aisle and help them navigate that the first thing you're going to find is pasta, then you're going to find soup, and then you're going to find, then you're going to find, right? So again, think of it that way. They are ready to shop. They are shopping usually. That's why they're clicking. They're doing searches. So they've come to you with an empty cart and they're ready to fill it. And if you don't tell them what you offer and what you have to the, they may want to, and why they want to put it in their cart, they're going to leave with an empty cart. <laughs> I just think that's a great way to think about this. Um, so here we go to recap. There's four key things, a landing page, a who you are page, a what you do, and how to contact you. Those are the main areas that you need on every website on your website. <laughs> Excuse me. So I ask you, are you ready to grow? Because I tell you right now, you get this cleaned up and you get it simplified, or maybe you haven't even launched and you're ready to launch your business. Get those few things built and ready and you're going to be ready to grow your business. So I'm going to um, go ahead and um, here's my contact details, but I'm going to shift and see if we have any questions. And um, see here, I'm, I'm trying to navigate <laughs> too many things at once. Um, and so I don't know if there's any questions about um, 
uh, this is a great way to start. Um, Steph, so the, the five, that fascinated me, the five different uh, pieces of each page. So it would be each of those four sections would have like five sections on each page or each mm -hmm. uh, would have five sections on it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's very common. And it's like I said, it was just, it's just funny that when you, when I went and looked even at Disney, that they still follow that same model. And a lot of that is, it's like anything else. Like when there used to be, when you would do a PowerPoint presentation, if you had too many points, you made a second slide. It's kind of that same idea that if there's too much, you're going to have another page. You're going to have them go. And you want to, again, make it very Quick. Now you'll see, and it's and it's different for Disney. It's all images, right? They use all images. Um, some people will use icons. Some people will use words. But it, I have been fascinated about one, two, three, four, five. So many websites you're going to go to, you're going to notice it now. <laughs> they've got the hero image, and then they've got the four buckets of things for you to do from that main page. Steph, are you finding that more people are trying to handle this themselves? Um, or, uh, or do they keep this in mind when they go to their web developer and say, you know, um, because I, I guess I've done a lot of websites where I've had to kind of sketch out what I want and then I hand it over to somebody. So it would be really helpful for you to kind of have all that together in a list or something and be yeah. able to get over to the developer. Yeah. Yeah. What you're going to find if you go work with somebody, uh, most of the ones that you work with, and it's been my case, whether I worked with a developer or even in my own business, you're going to get templates. They're going to give you an outline of how they build a website. And so often it's going to be like this, like, what do you want the hero image? So they're going to give you a general template and then you're going to be able to edit it. That's very common. What sometimes they'll do is a discovery meeting with you and they're going to ask a lot of questions. They may even have a questionnaire to fill out and it's going to even ask like colors, examples. They're going to want you to send your favorite websites. Um, um, and so a lot of that, and I would say the same thing, if you are, I, we do see a lot of people, especially um, smaller business owners, maybe solopreneurs trying to do this for themselves. I think it's like anything else. If you need to go out and take courses and learn and you're not really enjoying it, you may want to look at that because um, you can actually find people to get you going for like a thousand dollars. And you have to think of your time. Um, if you need a very extensive website with a big fancy shop, you know, you might have a bigger $3,000 investment. Um, but, um, you know, some people uh, are great. And then what you're going to find like WordPress and the site we use, they all have templates. You just pick the template <laughs> and you put your colors in. Um, and most of them, it, you will laugh, but once you buy it, the template's going to have those four or five sections and then you can move them around depending on what, what you want and how you like. Um, but the best thing I always tell people to start is to go look at other sites. I, I used Pinterest when I built mine. I always tell my clients, um, look on Pinterest color board, stuff like that. Uh, Steph, thank you for that beautiful presentation. I love the slides. I love everything you put in there. And I want you to know you have a question. Someone is asking, if I add a blog, how often should it be changed? Once a week, once a, week, once a month, or what, what time frame? Oh, awesome. That is actually a great question. I was just talking to a new client about last week about that. And I really would say it depends on your business. Um, and what I mean by that is if you have, um, like I said, like the roofing business, right? They're not going to have information necessarily. Probably what they might not have something every week that has to do with your roof and care and stuff, right? They may have something um, every other week or once a month, depending on that. So I think you need to look at your business. If you're a coach, you need lots of content. And you should be doing a blog at least once a week if you're a coach, um, because um, that is really showcasing your talent and your expertise. And it's really critical to make sure that you're going out there. I work with, um, uh, I don't know if April's on today, but we've got a new potential um, business owner coming on to get certified. And she has a health coaching business. And she sends some out every Monday and it's all the steps of things to keep in mind of your health for that week and it really showcases her expertise and what services she offers so you know again I would look at your business and what makes sense and um, what's great is most systems um, can automatically add that in and it's it's great again if you don't have testimonials maybe you haven't even gathered them before a blog works just as well 
right. Are there certain platforms you can recommend, like you're mentioning WordPress and stuff like that for do-it-yourselfers versus having someone do it? What are some of the, I don't know, is there? Yeah. <laughs> There are so many. I have to admit, I um, have a few favorites that I've worked with, and it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. I think what you have to look at again is what's the key. And if you are just needing a website to get basic information out, like I showed you, here's the, you know, my four different areas, here's the things that I offer, and you don't need it to work hard for you to be a really workhorse. So what I mean by that is like, you, Emily, probably need to sell. You need a store. That's a workhorse website, right? They need some more power behind it. And you're going to want to find a system that specifically caters to a storefront on a site. If you run a membership, like we do, you want a platform that specifically caters. And the reason I say that is that um, we were there ourselves here at Webeck, Florida. We were trying to make our WordPress site work for us, but it was a bit cumbersome for us and the members. And so moving to a platform that specifically is for membership makes a huge difference for us and for you. Um, same thing if your store. So what I would say is determine what the key goal of the site is. If it's just informational, use a WordPress. I know Diane, you've got some others you've used that are really great and cost effective. Um, use those. But if you need it to do more, then you want to maybe specifically invest in a system that is specific to running stores, that's specific to doing, um, there's even sites now in this virtual conferences, maybe you're a speaker and you're now going to just do virtual conferences. You can get a system that is set up just to help you host virtual conferences and it has a website built in. Yeah, I, I used uh, Wix at one point because it's easy to do, but you have to keep in mind that once you build it on something like that, you are locked in, you know, pretty much forever. Uh, you have to pay the monthly fees or the annual fees or whatever, um, because otherwise you don't have a site. So, um, whereas if you go with a designer, they can design the site and, and host it wherever you want, and then you kind of take it with you wherever you go. So. You know, these are just things you learn along the way. I, that is a great one. And it definitely, I think, is something um, that, yeah, if you go with one of these um, ones that is specific, like a storefront or like we do membership, yeah, you have to rebuild <laughs> when you move. That's yeah. why it's a big decision. I just, I want, I'm so glad that, Steph, that you um, brought up the piece about the kind of about us. Um, so many times we're doing site visits and we, we like to look at your websites before we go in. To, to see you and and you know try to figure out who what you're all about and there's nothing on there the about us might have a paragraph that just says um, we sell uh, parts and you know that's it and you're like well who is behind this you know, what's the story about the family who started this back in 1857 or you know what is this um, all about and who's this woman business owner? And so I think people are kind of shy about putting themselves out there. But again, yeah. if people are gonna do business with someone they know, like, and trust, it's gotta be, you have to have something on the site that says something about personality of your business. You know? And you know what, Diane? Like, that's the first thing I click when I go to someone's site is about me. I wanna know who they are first and foremost before even looking at anything else. You and do. also like, is this their picture or is it some generic picture of some stock image of somebody that's not them that is like i think is not a, does not serve them well at all they really should showcase themselves it's the trust factor right yeah. yeah yeah the other thing i'll add just um and i know we're, we're going over but i just want to make sure everybody understands is that it's all about stories and i'm gonna tell you right now having worked at walmart in supplier diversity and everything else they are going to want to know Walmart, Disney, everybody wants to know your story about your business because they want to tell that story. They love to say, we picked so-and-so because it was a fourth generation or it was a first generation or it was, I made this in the front room of my home. <laughs> the story is so important nowadays more than ever. It's not like in the past where it all had to be so corporate looking. It truly is individual and personal. And so that's another 
other thing is that don't be afraid. You put those stories out there. You be proud of them, whatever they are. And um, because uh, they're going to want to tell those stories. So it's not just important to us and, or an individual consumer, but those big corporates want to see it too. <laughs> that should be another topic. How to tell your story better. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. We, uh, I don't even know where my storyteller guy coaches, but, um, yeah, we'll have to do that. So I know we've gone over and I just want to make sure it's in the recording. Um, we will have Nancy, um, speak next week and I, I can't remember <laughs> what the topic is, but we'll make sure we share it with you. Um, and then on July 6th, we're going to be postponing, not going to have a session that week because of the 4th of July holiday. And, um, but we're going to keep these going, um, because, uh, we know you guys need it and we appreciate you. So, reach out if you need anything. That's what we're here for. Thank you so much. Again, everybody, we're so excited to have you here. Thank you so much to the team. It's always great to see your faces and stay tuned. You're going to get a chance to see all of us hopefully soon in some of these meetups. So have a great week, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much.